Welcome to Brewing. I'm your host. My name is Scott Leffler. It is Thursday, October 18th, 2012, in the year of our Lord. And I'm freestyling today. When I was a professional talk show host, as opposed to the two-bit hack talk show host that I am now, I had a consultant, a guy by the name of Jim Pastor. Great guy. Jim has worked for a variety of radio stations in and around the Buffalo area. Helping them with a variety of things. Now, consultants scare people, right? Like, Because consultants come in and cut jobs and lay people off. And they tell you how to do your job, and pretty much you don't like them. I love this guy, Jim Pastrick. He was so helpful to me in my career. Taught me a variety of things. One of the things Jim Pastrick taught me, which is something that I use to this day, is to make an outline of my show, if you will. Um... Not exactly what I'm going to say word for word, but bullet points so that I don't miss things so that I know what I'm talking about and I, you know, share things properly with you. And I do that all the time. In fact, I've done an outline, I call them brewing notes, uh, on every show to this point. Today I have no outline. Today I am completely free balling, just boom. I have a couple things I want to talk about. I hope I remember them. I may, I may not. Some politics, some personal stuff. I want you to know a little bit more about me because because um, I like to talk about me. Uh, I like to talk. I know me. I like to talk about things I know about. So I like to talk about me. A lot of people like to talk about themselves and those people are annoying as shit. And I try not to be too annoying today. So at some point this morning, someone used the phrase, and I'm not sure who, I have a feeling it was my girlfriend, but I'm not positive. Somebody used the phrase, made it through the wilderness. And now I have like a virgin stuck in my head. I have this horrible um, affliction, if you will. I get things stuck in my head very easily. I get songs on loop, and normally it's okay. After the show today, I'm going to have to listen to the song like a virgin, because once I play it through, then I can move on. But until then... I've still got it stuck in my head, and somehow I made it through, and ah, like, ugh. who wants to get Madonna stuck in their head? Well, some people might. I am not one of those people, but that's what's running through my head right now. That's not why I'm ill-prepared today. Um, believe it or not, the interwebs were just uh, devoid of information. There was not much going on. So I'm going to talk about a couple of the things that we talked about yesterday. I want to continue the conversation that we were having on the debate. I want to talk about Lance Armstrong, and I want to talk about Felix Baumgartner, the dude that fell from space. Um, and I want to know what you think about not just Felix Baumgartner, but free-falling and, 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 and skydiving. We were having the conversation this morning about like things you would do, things you wouldn't do. I would love to, love to skydive. Uh, it is high on my list of things to accomplish in my life. Uh, my column this week mentioned the fact that going to a presidential inauguration was on my bucket list, if you will, and I did that four years ago. I'm hoping to do it again this January, although we'll see. It depends on life. Uh, but four years ago, I was lucky enough to take my daughter with me to Washington. We went and saw the inauguration. We had tickets. Um, and it, like, it was awesome. The only thing that was bad about the only thing that was bad about going to the inauguration was our living quarters, if you will. The plan was, now I had just bought, four years ago, I had just bought a new car, Honda Element. I actually bought, is that right? Four years ago? Yeah, it has to be, because it was election day. I closed, I closed on it. I finalized the deal on my Honda Element on election day four years ago, uh, and it is an awesome car. It's it's a great car to live in if you have to. There were a couple occasions when I did. I had a lot of transitional housing for a while there um, where I would move from one house to another house and not really. And the good thing is that um, I didn't own anything. So like I didn't have much to worry about. Anyway, long story short, Han Element, very comfortable to sleep in. So our plan was, me and the big one, we were going to go to Washington, D.C. and we were just going to like camp out in like a Kmart parking lot Catch the Metro in, see the inauguration, boom, it would be cool. Well, I mentioned this on the radio. I was working at WLVL uh, right here in beautiful Lockport, New York at the time. And 
somebody somebody decided that this wasn't a good idea. Um, I was going to freeze to death or get mugged or something. I, I'm not sure why, but they decided uh, me and my daughter, who was 11 at the time, sleeping in my car overnight was not a good idea. Now, I've done this before. I've done it since. I should have done it then. I should have followed my instincts. But instead, this person, this guy, convinced me that I needed to bunk with this friend of his. Nice woman. Lovely woman. But the main reason I didn't want to stay somewhere is because I didn't want to have to deal with all the niceties. Uh, pretty much I wanted a couch or a floor to sleep on, show up, fall asleep, wake up in the morning, and I'm gone. I didn't want chit-chat. I didn't want breakfast. I didn't want lunch. I like... Really, what I, I I didn't want the whole experience. I just, cool, I can crash on your floor, that's awesome, I'm in. Except, that's not how it worked. And pretty much exactly what I didn't want is what happened. I didn't want to, I don't want to have to deal with all the niceties. I didn't want to, I didn't want to be bogged down with the social aspect of staying with someone. Now, this isn't that I didn't appreciate it, it's that I didn't have time for it, and I didn't have the energy for it. We drove to Washington uh, on January 19th, drove straight through, got there. Um, in the evening, I guess, because we had to pick up our inauguration tickets. So we got there, I guess maybe it was late afternoon, actually. We, we probably left for D.C. in the relatively early morning, about the time that, that my daughter should have been going to school. But I was letting her play hooky from school to go to the inauguration, because really? So we get to Washington, we get our tickets, we have some dinner, we end up at this woman's house, and we just exhausted, just want to sleep. But no, she's like, I don't want to keep you. But in like four hours later, I'm like, lady... Please. Again, not that I don't appreciate her help. But then we wake up in the morning, and we're just like, all right, let's go. And she's like, no, 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 you got to have breakfast. And so we had breakfast. And then she's like, here, take this lunch. And we had lunch. And, and the big one and I, the, the, one of the most memorable parts of this trip to D.C., and I love how vacations are, right? Like, there are the things that are supposed to be memorable, and then there's what you remember. And one of the things, sorry, I'm trying to fix the light here so that you can actually see me a little bit. One of the things, I don't like the lighting here, though, at all. We might have to move back to the kitchen tomorrow. Tomorrow! I might not have a show. We'll get back to that. No, I have a show. I'm just not sure when it's going to be. It may be pre-recorded. There are things from vacations that you expect to remember. And then there are things that, like, just happen. And one of the things that we remember from this vacation are these ham and cheese sandwiches that this very nice woman made for us. Because she obviously shopped at Whole Foods or something. Um, the ham was okay, the cheese was okay, but this bread was like encased in tree bark or something. We, we, we refer to it as Hork and Fiber bread. Uh, I also refer to Hork and Fiber cereal, which is any cereal which has a similar consistency um, a la tree bark. So one of the things that we remember is the fact that we had this bread for these sandwiches that she forced us to take and then she forced us to bring, like, cardboard boxes because it was going to be cold standing on the ground. Like, I don't, like, again, I don't remember your name, miss. You were lovely, and I really appreciate your kindness. But it was just more than we wanted. Where the hell was I going with this? Oh, so maybe we'll go to the inauguration again. I think that's where we're going. I'm not sure. Um, although the little one wants to go this year because now the little one is four years older, so... It, I don't, maybe I'll bring them both. I'm not sure. But, uh, oh, so I get songs stuck in my head. See, this is why I have notes. Jim, this is why you told me to write notes, because I, I don't know. So I get these songs stuck in my head until I can play them th through, like, they're just stuck. And inauguration, I don't even know why I wanted to mention the inauguration. Because I wanted to talk about something that was in my column. <laughs> Shit if I know. Anyway, one of the things I do want to talk about today is I want to talk about the attacks in the Middle East on September 11th of this year. Because they have been highly politicized to the point that it's, it's really, it's, it's despicable. Now, 
each side, of course, is saying that the other side is politicizing it. You know my feelings on the candidates. I don't like Barack Obama. I dislike Mitt Romney. There's a, there's a difference there. That's that's like the difference between like I, I don't I don't like liver and onions, but I'll eat it. However, I dislike au gratin potatoes. Like if you ever want to make me dinner and you make me au gratin potatoes, I will not eat it. That is one of the few things in, in my life that I just I won't eat. When I was this high, smaller. When I was very little, um, I we had au gratin potatoes for dinner when I was camping, and I like they made me ill, like violently ill. And my mother made me keep eating them, and and so to this day, I will not eat au gratin or scalloped potatoes because, as far as I can tell, they're exactly the same thing. And in fact, it might have been scalloped potatoes that I had to eat. I can't tell the difference between the two. I won't eat either one of them. Like no, no, no. I'll eat a lot of things. Um, I'll try Rocky Mountain Oysters. Um, I love sushi. Um, I've never had, but I'd be happy to try sushimi. I I'll try all sorts of things. Scale potatoes? Never. Never, 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 never. Never. You're watching Brewing. I'm Scott Leffler. I have coffee. You can tweet me, at Scott Leffler. Let me know what you think. So the attacks in Benghazi, uh, the attacks in the Middle East, and particularly the consulate in Benghazi, uh, there's been a lot of hay made, political hay, and it was brought up the other night in the presidential debate, and I'm sure, I'm sure it will come up uh, in Monday's debate, which focuses on foreign policy. It seems to me that politicizing the death of Americans is just something that shouldn't happen. I know that in the past, Democrats have, have done this, and Republicans jumped all over them for it, and rightfully so, because you just should not, it's something you just shouldn't do. There are, there are four people, well, there are millions of people, but, but in particular in this, in this attack, there are four people who are dead. They used to be alive, now they're not, their families are grieving, and we're politicizing it. And, and we're politicizing it to the, to the point where, like, Mitt Romney is making up a story about how we met this guy, and they, they shared, you know, their emotions, and how wonderful this guy was, one of the, one of the guys that, uh, that died in Libya. And the, the guy's friend is like, dude, um, so... My buddy remembers when he met Mitt Romney, and we used to joke about it because Mitt Romney was kind of an ass. Which doesn't surprise me at all because Mitt Romney is kind of an ass. So the fact that they're trying to make political hay out of this situation, it, it bothers me. Now, it's been a month. Is there a time period after which you can, you know, make politics out of it? I don't, I don't think so. I, I just, I, I think that, look, there was a catastrophic failure. Uh, within the intelligence and military community, uh, these consulates should have been better protected. Whether or not they asked for better protection is, you know, it's it's a point of contention. How about bugs? Some sort of a little bug. Go away, bug. Go away, bug. Um, it was like a little, it looked like an aphid, but it was red. I don't know. Um, so the fact that this happened is horrible. And we need to get to the bottom of it. But instead of getting to the bottom of it, the next day Mitt Romney is on television, you know, talking about the failure of the Obama administration. And Obama is on television talking about, you know, the YouTube video that sparked this. And then there's the whole discussion the other night about whether or not Obama referred to it, President Obama, Governor Romney. I'm sorry, I should be more, respect more respectful. Except, no, screw that, Obama, Romney, whatever. Uh, Mitt Barack. They're just people, just like you and me. They're just people. They just happen to be really rich and powerful. But they put their pants on one leg at a time, just like us. Except sometimes I don't put my pants on one leg at a time because I like sit on the bed and I pull. Anyway, doesn't matter. I really am drinking coffee, by the way. This really is coffee. Not beer today. Although that beer yesterday was delicious. And shit, no, I can't have beer tomorrow. Remind me to tell you why I can't have beer tomorrow. It's important. It's a big deal. I'm excited about it. Hi, little bug. You're kind of a cute thing, but go away. Thank you. So, I feel like if Mitt Romney weren't already an ass, he is now because of the way he's dealing with this. Because, because he's trying to make political points out of people's deaths. And that really, 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 really bothers me. 
and he's making up stories. And it appears, by the way, the whole binders full of women thing, it appears that's made up too. He didn't ask for binders full of women. Somebody said, here are some female candidates. Please hire these. And uh, according to this group from Massachusetts, this women's group from Massachusetts, he did a good job of hiring women in like the first year of his term as governor and then like fell off dramatically after that. And so he did well and then he didn't. But he didn't ask for binders full of women. Uh, and if he did... Why not, why not ask Bill Clinton? I'm still loving the Binders Full of Women memes, by the way. Much more entertaining than the whole Big Bird thing. Big Bird got old very, very quickly. I have a feeling Binders Full of Women might have some legs. Get it? Legs? Da -da a friend of mine points out the other day, yesterday, that she's not so upset about the Binders Full of Women comment as she is about the fact that he said something to the effect of so that these women can get home in time to make dinner. Um, which... What frickin' year is it? Look, I, I've had three serious relationships in my adult life. I had my marriage. Um, I had a very short, incredibly painful relationship. And then I have the relationship that I'm in now. I cooked in all three of those relationships. I did most of the cooking. Now, at the end of, towards the end of my marriage, we got to the point where my wife was doing a, a fair percentage of the cooking as well, but for the most part, cooking was my thing. As was, by the way, dishes and laundry. And I don't mind that. I do, however, mind a, a presidential candidate in the year 2012 sending women home to the kitchen to cook. How can you, how can you run for president with this sort of uh, thought process and think that anyone is going to vote for you Except for the redneck KKK members who were going to vote for you anyway. If they really are courting the women's vote, uh, Mitt Romney is doing it very poorly. Um, and so this friend of mine mentions that this is the thing that she's upset about. Not the binders full of women, which was in and of itself just funny. And somewhat, I mean, it was somewhat offensive. But not nearly as offensive as so that the women can get home in time to cook. Um, like, I don't understand how someone can say that and that's not a huge deal. I, I agree with this friend of mine wholeheartedly. So, are you upset? Are you offended by either the politicizing of the September 11th, 2012 attacks or Mitt Romney's complete lack of camp comprehension of women? Now look, I don't want to for a second convey to you, because I would be lying, that I understand women. I don't. I never have. I don't think I ever will. I'm trying, but Mars and Venus and all that shit, um, yeah, I, I don't get it. However, I'm smart enough to know not to say, honey, go make me a sandwich. Like, that's just stupid. I would never do that. I'm much more inclined to say, honey, would you like a sandwich? But, again, that's just me. So, that was just one of the things from the debate the other night that that I think it's going to continue to have some legs. And again, the, the joke with the legs. Uh, another thing that happened, and I read this this morning, last night. They all blend together. I don't sleep much, so morning turns into night, and I'm not sure what's what. But Mitt Romney's son apparently made a comment on the radio yesterday that he was so upset that Barack Obama has called his, had called his father a liar that he wanted to run down from the crowd and punch Barack Obama in the head. Now, we talked yesterday about the fact that it looked like a boxing match, right? Like, they were circling, they were doing their things, um, no one ever took a swing, but apparently Mitt Romney's son wanted to. Dude, some free advice. If you ever want to take a swing at the President of the United States, don't mention it on radio. Especially if your dad is running for president, because when if, if you're trying to be the family values guy and your son is going, yeah, man, I totally want to take a swing at the president because he called my dad a liar. He goes, but I didn't because there's all the secret service there. Oh, and it's part of the process. Now I'm pretty sure that you didn't because there's all the secret service there. And look, look, you probably didn't because you know it's wrong. But still, why would you say that? Like I, like I don't. What is with these people, these Romney people? I don't get them at all. I don't get them at all. I just don't 
understand it. So once again, we have a Republican presidential candidate with kids who are out of control. Um, I guess last time around it was a Republican vice presidential candidate with kids that are out of control. This time it's Mitt's own children who are out of control and I just... It's another one of those things where I'm like, why, why would anyone vote for Mitt Romney? Again, I'm not going to vote for Barack Obama. I'll, I'll vote for Gary Johnson. Oh, here's the thing. Had a conversation yesterday about the fact that I'm going to waste my vote, right? Because I'm going to vote for a third-party candidate, and my guy is not going to win. And I know he's not going to win, but I'm going to vote for him anyway. And, and, and the conversation was, well, why would you waste your vote? Here's why I'm going to waste my vote. It's the same reason I wasted my vote four years ago. Uh, and it's the same reason I wasted my vote four years before that. Because I'm going to vote for the person I most agree with. Not for the person that I dislike less of the two major parties who have a death grip on American politics. I'm going to vote for the person that I think would best represent me. No matter whether or not that person's going to win. Because that's being true to myself. And I would hope that you would do the same. Now, I have some... Liberty to do that, living in New York. Barack Obama is going to win New York. So to a great deal, my vote doesn't matter anyway. It is theoretically possible that if I lived in Ohio or Florida or Colorado or, or one of the many other swing states, it is plausible that I may do the lesser of two evils thing. But I don't think so. I think I would still vote my conscience. And my conscience says that the person I have to vote for is Gary Johnson. Look him up. Maybe you like him. Maybe you don't. But here's the deal. Here's, here's my deal. Here's what I would ask for you to do. If you like him, vote for him. If you like Jill Stein, the Green Party candidate, vote for her. If you like Mitt Romney, by all means, vote for the guy. But don't vote for him because he's not Barack Obama. And don't vote for Barack Obama because he's not Mitt Romney. Find somebody that you actually align with and vote for that person, please, dear God. Because if more people would waste their votes and vote for who we actually wanted, third parties might actually get some traction. And maybe four years from now, when America still exists, because neither one of these candidates, no matter how horrible they are, is going to destroy America. Neither one of them is going to destroy America in four years or eight years or 16 years. America will still be here because we are not our president. America is more than who is president. All right? Neither one of these guys is going to destroy America. Are they going to do some things you might not like? Yeah, sure. Of course they are. But if you were to vote your conscience and vote for the person that you like the best, maybe four years from now, the third-party candidates would be taken credibly. This is, a, this is a lot about what my column was about this week. I would like to see the media, of which I am a part of, take third-party candidates more seriously and actually... Not promote them, but give them the ink and airtime in which I believe they deserve. And if that were to happen, they might get more votes. And then next time around, they might get even more votes. And then maybe the time after that, we might actually have a real election with different people with different ideas instead of a black version of Mitt Romney and a white version of Barack Obama, which is pretty much what we have right now. The guys are the same. Yes, some of their policies differ greatly. But by and large, they're the same person. And America is still going to exist in four years. So that's my plea to you. Please, vote your conscience. When, when you vote on Election Day, vote for the person you want to win and not against the person you don't. That's my request. So tomorrow, I, had, I know I had other things I wanted to talk about. And this is why I usually have a list. You're watching Brewing. My name is Scott Leffler. You can tweet me, at Scott Leffler. Tomorrow, I am going to Rochester uh, to see President Clinton at a speech slash rally, whatever, Rochester, New York, uh, to see President Clinton at a speech slash rally with my congresswoman, uh, whose name is Kathy Ogle, she won a special election was it two years ago, uh, a year and a half ago, whatever it was. She won a special election, and now she's up for her for her first real election. Uh, I live in the congressional district with uh, Christopher Lee, the, the the Craigslist congressman. That's where I live. 
He was my congressman. And by the way, I loved Chris Lee. Republican congressman from Amherst, wherever the hell he was from. I thought he did a bang-up job. Uh, one of my favorite Republicans ever. And, pardon my French, a shit ton better than his predecessor, uh, Tom Reynolds, who was pretty much, a listener of mine once referred to him as uh, Karl Rove, but without the warmth, which is about accurate. Chris Lee, however, completely different. Uh, really nice guy, really warm guy, easy to talk to. Um, did good work, in my humble but honest opinion. Unfortunately, he was trolling Craigslist for, you know, women, and that kind of backfired on him. He lost his job in Congress, and we now have Kathy Hochul. So she is going to be at a rally in Rochester with President Clinton and Louise Slaughter, who is another local congresswoman who represents the Rochester district. She used to represent this very bizarrely shaped congressional district, but now she's out primarily in Rochester, I believe. Uh, and they're going to be at this rally, so I'm going. Uh, photo girl's coming with me. She's going to take some photos. I'm probably going to write some sort of a, a story about the event. I've seen President Clinton speak on several occasions. I don't know how many exactly, um, but several, like a lot. And he never, ever, ever disappoints. So I'm always looking forward to seeing Bill Clinton. Um, I saw George Bush in 2004 at Klein Hands. That was fun. The security for that was crazy, um, but it was a lot of fun. I've seen Al Gore. I've seen George H.W. Bush. I've seen Ronald Reagan. Um, I've seen Bob Dole. I've, I've had a, an opportunity to see a lot of a lot of pheno phenomenal, phenomenal, phenomenal is not a word. Phenomenal, that's a word. I've seen a lot of phenomenal politicians throughout the years and looking forward to again seeing Bill Clinton and then of course as I mentioned I, I saw Barack Obama at the inauguration and actually we saw him we were on the Lefflers were on vacation in Pennsylvania uh, in the summer of 2008 and President Obama along with Michelle and Joe Biden and Jill all went to like this little podunk town in Pennsylvania called like Beaver Hills or Beaver Falls or Beaver Mountain or Beaver Creek, I, Beaver something or other. And it was like a town over from where we were camping. So we went and it was really cool. I, I, I don't like that was just bizarre. It was the, like the day after the uh, Democratic National Convention wrapped up. So tomorrow I'm going to go see Bill Clinton. That's at 3.30 in Rochester. But we may have to get there early due to, you know, security concerns, photo girl with her bag and all that. Uh, so I'm not sure if tomorrow's show is going to be live or if I'm going to have to record it earlier in the day and share it with you that way. But one way or another, I will be here uh, tomorrow uh, broadcasting for you and telling you my thoughts on a variety of things. In the background, we have uh, Dead Mouse. I have a Dead Mouse station on my Pandora, and I like it a lot. And it's really good for, like, intro and outro music. So Dead Mouse in the background, and... We're 30 minutes into the show. Seems like a good time to wrap it up since I don't know what else to talk about because I didn't write down notes. Uh, although there were other things I wanted to talk about. I wanted to talk about Lance Armstrong, but I'm not going to do that right now. And I wanted to talk about uh, uh, Felix Baumgartner, but I'm not going to do that right now either. But at some point in the future, maybe we'll discuss those things. You've been watching Brewing. I'm your host. My name is Scott Leffler. Tweet me after the show. I'll still get it. Thanks for tuning in.